Hi everyone. So I'm Mitali and I work at Think Tank. So recently all of us have seen a lot about the image of the black hole. It's gone viral everywhere. So ever since the image of the black hole has gone viral and even though Discovery Channel has taught us a little about the black hole, I have little clue about what it really is. So here are seven questions all of us have about the black hole answered by Dr. Prachetta Malik the astrophysicist. Hi Pro nice to have you here. Hi Mitali good to be here. Uh, it's quite a pleasure to be here at uh, Sir C V Raman's house uh, in Bangalore. You can see a beautiful summer carpet of yellow flowers uh, and um, it's kind of an honor to speak about the black hole here uh, not I feel a bit underqualified. But the Raman Institute has produced a huge number of radio astronomers. They are the ones who have actually made this image. And uh, of course, uh, some of the finest relativists uh, in India, like Professor Visheshwara, who passed away uh, a year or two back, as well as Professor Radhakrishnan uh, and uh, uh, Professor Raja Ram, who's still very much an active scientist, are all experts on relativity and you know conceptualizing the whole uh, thing about black holes have had a lot of theoretical papers regarding it so it's a great honor to speak about it here in in his in C sir cv raman's house yeah okay so let's get started with the questions pro uh so first question the basic one what is the black hole and how does it form a uh, very good question uh, the a black hole i think uh, a lot of it is not well understood. The black hole that has been discovered is in the center of a galaxy. And what we know now is that all galaxies perhaps have a very big black hole in the middle of them. When I say very big, I mean they're not only very big in size, but extremely huge in mass. Uh, several million, sometimes billion solar masses. Like this one is 6.5 billion times the mass of the sun. Uh, is the size of this black hole. Uh, I think in galaxies they're probably formed because in the center of galaxies are very dense, matter keeps coming together due to gravity and once that matter becomes dense enough and big enough you get a black hole and the black hole keeps growing in size at least initially in a galaxy's development because it keeps sucking in stars and matter from around it. You also have black holes in space which are smaller, maybe a few solar masses uh, and those happen because uh, uh, could happen due to several uh, conditions. It could be a star that explodes, called a, or not explodes, but that ends its life in a supernova and uh, through what's called a core collapse. And that collapse of the core can happen, can end with a black hole, although that's not very common. What's more likely are you have very much more dense objects called neutron stars uh, or other small black holes or, or in a binary star system where two stars kind of collide. And that explosion or that collision or the combination of those could also cause a black hole uh, within our galaxy. Uh, for example, itself, there are several and you can have, um, but those are always in the range of a few solar masses, 10, 40, 50, 60 solar masses. So those are smaller black holes, but they exist. Uh, a black hole is called a black hole because you can't see it. So even this image that you've seen that's gone viral, of a black hole is not really the image of the black hole. We are seeing the edge of the black hole, uh, which we'll talk about uh, a little bit later. But a black hole is basically so dense a material that the gravitation is so strong that even light cannot escape. And hence you cannot see it by definition. So uh, what is so fascinating about a black hole? Why is there so much hype about it? Uh, I think because it's not very well understood what's, what goes on inside it is why there's so much fascination about it. Uh, of course, things can get sucked into anything that has a gravitational pull. Uh, uh, if the Earth stopped revolving, it would get sucked into the sun, but that doesn't mean it's getting sucked into a black hole. So the black hole does the same thing that any mass would do, is that it attracts other masses around it, and if they go in, you don't see that mass anymore. So that's the that's the very i mean you don't see the physically you cannot visibly see it but you know that the mass is there obviously the black hole has a mass it has a gravity around it and it's because of that gravity around it that we know that it exists so stars go around black holes if they get too close they get sucked in uh, and go into the black hole now i think what's interesting is uh, what is there inside a black hole or what happens inside we don't know and we'd probably never know because it's impossible to get information out of there because light cannot come out, 
So information cannot come out from inside a black hole. So therefore, I think it creates that fascination in people that, oh, it's a, like a total unknown. It's literally a black hole. And so we don't know <laughs> what goes on in there. So the third question, uh, why did it take so long to take the first picture of the black hole? And is it really the first picture of the black hole? Uh, good question. Um, so as I said, black holes themselves cannot be imaged because light doesn't come out of it. But there is a region around a black hole where light can escape. And that's what we call the event horizon. So be below which, inside of which, is the point of no return. If something goes in, it doesn't come out. Outside of which, we can see some radiation that happens. The image that has been taken has been taken with multiple radio telescopes. So the image that you're seeing of a nice, you know, red band here and a yellow band on top is not something that if I take my camera or point telescope towards it that I'll see. These are radio telescopes that are taking image in a certain wavelength which the human eye cannot see. And then the data is analyzed and made into a picture which we can put in a book or put on the computer that can be seen. Uh, making the composite of this image with the multiple telescopes is what has taken eight or ten years. So the Event Horizon Telescope is not a single telescope. It's a group of telescopes uh, all around the world. Uh, there's one in the South Pole, there are several in South America, in Chile, in the Atacama Desert, there's a few in Europe and North America. And so the baseline, meaning from the lowest, from the South Pole Telescope to the ones the furthest up, is almost the diameter of the Earth. And that allows us to use a technique called interferometry, which improves what we call the resolution or the uh, finer details of the object that we can see. These are all radio telescopes. So they've taken an image in a wavelength of about 1.3 millimeters. That particular wavelength gets absorbed by clouds. So all eight or 10 telescopes had to have clear skies at the same time to be able to make an image of this. And that's, that itself took about eight to 10 years. So that's why it took so long. The other reason is there's a huge amount of data, what's called a petabyte of data. And that is a thousand terabytes or a thousand and twenty-four terabytes to be precise. And a terabyte is thousand and twenty-four gigabytes. So we're talking about a million gigabytes of data, uh, which is huge and it had to be processed through multiple, uh, multiple computers, both in Boston and in Germany. Uh, and that took a long time. The scientist at MIT, uh, Katie Bauman, who's a computer scientist who's made the algorithm uh, for making this image, uh, who's now going to move to the California Institute of Technology as a professor. So she is a PhD student and then a postdoc, and she's been developing this algorithm to actually uh, be able to use this data and make an image of it. And it was done independently by eight different institutes, and they all got the same image using her algorithm or pretty much the same image. So that was a great uh, proof of concept that her algorithm is right. And it was done by this very young lady uh, working in, at MIT. So the fourth question, uh, does this black hole have a name? And if so, what is the name of the black hole? So uh, actually this particular galaxy, so this uh, black hole in the middle of another galaxy, uh, the galaxy is 55 million light years away. And the galaxy has a name called M87, which is a catalog name. M stands for Messier, who's a French guy who cataloged a lot of 110 objects uh, that can actually be seen through simple telescopes or even with the naked eye. So this is M87, uh, which is a galaxy 55 million light years away. So the galaxy, so the black hole now is very simply called M87 star, which means it's the center of the galaxy M87. So that's its name currently. Okay, so the fifth question, how big is a black hole and does everything that revolve around a black hole actually get sucked in or are there things that do not get sucked in? What we can call the size of a black hole is what, we, what I said was the event horizon, beyond which things light, even light cannot escape once it goes below that. Uh, this particular black hole is 40 billion kilometers across, which is 3 million Earths if you line them up that will be the diameter of that particular uh, black hole. So that's the size of this particular black hole. It's 6.5 billion times the mass of the sun. 
So the sun has around two followed by 30 zeros. That's that many kilograms is the mass of the sun. And this is 6.5 billion times that. So you do the maths, uh, add a lot of zeros, and you get the mass of this particular black hole. But as I said before, you can get black holes that are, you know, 6, 8, 10, 20 solar masses as well. The black hole in the middle of our own Milky Way galaxy is a few million solar masses, around 20, so 20 million solar masses. So it's about 300 times... Uh, smaller or less massive than the one that's been discovered. Mm. All right. So the sixth question, how far is the black hole from the Earth itself? Uh, so yeah, so this particular black hole, as I said, is in another galaxy, so not even in the Milky Way galaxy. Uh, it's 55 million light years away, so the distance light travels in a year, multiply that by 55 million and you get uh, the distance of this particular galaxy uh, of this particular black hole uh, as I said the Milky Way galaxy also has a black hole in the middle uh, we are about 40,000 light years 30 or 40,000 light years away from that particular uh, black hole there are no black holes in our vicinity as such uh, there's there's a fear of something falling into a black hole as much as there are fear of us falling into the sun, for example. So if you're moving around something, it's unlikely that you'll fall in unless you're going too slowly. So only if you're going very slowly, then you keep going closer and closer to it and you get sucked in. So which is what happens with stars that are in the vicinity of a black hole. Of course, things get attracted to the black hole because of its gravity. And if they don't end up spinning fast enough around it, then they'll get sucked in. So that's what determines whether something would get sucked in or something would, you know, continue rotating around it uh, or revolving around it for, you know, millions and maybe billions of years. And then the last question. So uh, I've heard a lot about the Einstein's theory of relativity, which I have no clue about what it is. I've heard a lot about it and it has a lot to do with the black hole from what I understand. Uh, what I understand. Does it really? And if so, what is it? Yeah, so... Uh, yeah, very interesting question. I myself not a great uh, relativist, relativistic scientist or anything of that sort. Uh, but from what I understand is that the theory of relativity would predict objects like the black hole. Uh, what Einstein tried to say in his theory is that uh, space and time are interconnected. And when things, you know, reach what are called relativistic limits, means close to the speed of light or where the speed of light is involved, then the f a lot of the physical conditions tend to change uh, inside that region. So the fact that you're having a place which has zero volume with a lot of mass, which is the, where all the mass is concentrated, even though the effect of the mass is felt very far away, uh, in the event horizon itself, within that, light cannot escape. That's how strong gravity is in that entire region. But it's all focused at a, what's called a singularity, at a single point. So all these were things that are predicted by Einstein's theory and so far a lot of basically whatever he said seems to be coming true through observations whether it's gravitational waves which were detected a year or two back through again an interferometry method using gravitational wave detectors around the world whether it's bending of light that happens around galaxies so you have what's called gravitational lensing that also happens due to uh, what Einstein predicted uh, in his theory of relativity as well as things like, you know, the movement of uh, position of stars in a solar eclipse that you can see in the background have changed a little bit as well. And that was, you know, proved by Eddington and a bunch of astronomers uh, 100 years ago when they looked at, uh, looked at solar eclipse through a particular uh, telescope. So, I mean, yeah, so, I mean, is relativity a very complicated theory? Uh, not something that is taught in school, very rarely taught even at college level, usually postgraduate study relativity. And uh, the kind of region or the realm that we are talking about in black holes is in that relativistic realm because gravity is extreme, uh, light uh, isn't able to escape, and so you have extremely weird things going on. And Einstein kind of theorized all of them, and they seem to be proving thr uh, true through all our uh, observations. All right, so that's it for the questions now. Thank you, Pro. That was very helpful. Now I'll probably understand the black hole better. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Good to talk to you. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. I hope you liked the video. If you did like the video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. It's Think Tank. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, 
and comment on the video we'd love to hear from you any questions you have he will answer it for you and <laughs> and <laughs> and yes so uh, yeah subscribe to our channel thank you